At the beginning of the movie, a shootout is depicted at the harbor, conducted by members of the CIA and American Special Forces. They are on a raid mission to seize bombs and illegal weapons smuggled by a terrorist group planning to bomb Washington, D.C. CIA agent Jennifer Lomax leads the raid. Eventually, they manage to neutralize the terrorist group at the harbor. However, upon successfully opening the container, they find a frightened man. Jenny then interrogates the man, but he knows nothing about the smuggling Jenny refers to. Next, the scene shows a convoy of cars heading to the airport. In one of the cars, CIA Director Mike Marshall is interrogating the wife of the suspected terrorist. The woman, Nisha Mansour, of Arab descent, is a British citizen and a genuine fan of Manchester United, despite Harry Maguire and the other players performing poorly. Mike asks Nisha to persuade her husband, Amin Mansour, to reveal the smuggled goods. Meanwhile, Mansour has been arrested and will soon be picked up at the airport. Upon arriving at the airport, they waited for Mansour's arrival. Mike was immediately greeted by Jenny who had cleared the airport for everyone's safety. She then offered to take on another task, but Mike asked her to accompany Nisha instead. Not long after, Mansour finally arrived at the airport. Someone escorted him from the special forces named Jake Harris, known as the best agent in the United States. He even managed to eliminate all the terrorists and safely brought Mansur. Seeing his wife there, Mansur approached her with guilt and apologized to her. However, Nisha was looks angry and disappointed because of Mansur's actions. Her family was destroyed. Moreover, Nisha is currently four months into the pregnancy. In this scene, Nisha suggests that Mansur tell the location where the bomb is hidden. However, Mansur refuses, mentioning it as retribution against the American government for killing their eldest son. It turns out that Mansur was originally a good person from Iraq who lived in England. However, when Mansur and his family went to attend a cousin's wedding in Washington, D.C., they were mistakenly identified as terrorists. As a result, they were attacked by rogue American soldiers. The attack led to the death of Mansur's first child, and he promised to avenge his death by destroying the city of Washington, D.C. Then Harris is shown contacting his wife via video call. His wife is deeply worried about Harris as it has been long since she last heard from him. Harris comforts his wife, telling her that he will be home soon. However, suddenly, Harris spots some suspicious individuals heading to the lower floor. Swiftly Harris ends the call and follows them. Upon reaching the lower room, he finds that these individuals are mercenaries intending to catch Mansur. Realizing this, Harris immediately attacks them. Given the overwhelming number of mercenaries, Harris decides to flee, taking Mansur and Nisha with him. In the incident, several of Harris's men are killed while he manages to escape with Mansur and his wife in a car. Harris could not contact anyone during their escape since the mercenaries had hijacked all networks. Harris also had yet to learn who had hired these mercenaries, they were clearly highly trained in executing their mission. The mercenaries continued pursuing Harris's car until they eventually blocked the road. Left with no other choice, Harris had to return to the airport while protecting Mansur and Nisha. Upon reaching inside, Mansur asked Harris whether the mercenaries were after him or Harris. Harris replied that they wanted Mansur, not him. Then they fled to an upper floor as some of the mercenaries chased after them. There, they decided to split up. Harris would take down the mercenaries one by one, while Mansur was to keep hiding and protect Nisha. Soon after, Mansur and Nisha were found by one of the mercenaries. However, just as the mercenary was about to take Mansur, Harris arrived and killed the mercenary. Afterwards, Harris realized that the mercenaries wanted Mansur alive, which led him to assume that it all had to do with the bomb that Mansur had hidden. At that moment, Harris pressured Mansur to reveal where the bomb was hidden. Mansur replied that if he told Harris now, Harris would no longer protect him. Mansur also promised that if Harris managed to get him and his wife out safely, he would disclose the location of the bomb. Harris agreed to the terms, immediately putting bulletproof vests on Mansur and Nisha. Then they escape to an upper floor. The scene shifts to another room. Here, the leader of the mercenaries, named Robert Jackson, is coordinating with his two assistants. When Jackson removes his helmet, it's revealed that he is the man in charge. He assigns his assistants the task of catch Mansur before midnight. Jackson insists on catching Mansur alive because he needs the location of a bomb Mansur has hidden and also wants to record a statement from Mansur. Soon after, Jackson's men hacked the CCTV and located Harris, escorting Mansur and Nisha to the fifth floor. Jackson immediately orders his assistants to catch Mansur without delay. At the same time, Harris managed to bring Mansur and Nisha to the fifth floor because he was informed that the director of the CIA and others were waiting on the seventh floor. 
However, Harris must confront Jackson's men who have discovered their location to get there. A lengthy shootout ensues between them. Fortunately, Harris manages to kill all of them. After a prolonged battle, Harris finally brought Mansur and Nisha to the seventh floor. The CIA director and his members had been waiting for Harris and Mansur's arrival. The CIA director then inquired about their actual purpose. Harris stated that he was not aware of the details yet, but he assumed that the mercenaries were after Mansur alive. Then Harris invited Mansur to talk things through peacefully, informing him that if Mansur did not disclose the bomb's location, everyone present would perish. There, Harris also promised that if Mansur revealed it, Harris would continue to protect Mansur and his wife. Moreover, Mansur would be freed from any legal troubles. Hearing this, Mansur requested some time alone to reflect. In that place, Mansur's wife Nisha was seen treating Jenny's wounds. Nisha, a former doctor, was thus able to assist all the injured. Afterwards, Nisha approached Mansur who was in contemplation. There, Nisha also pleaded with Mansur to disclose the bomb's location rather than allowing it to be found first by the mercenary troops. On the other hand, Jenny asked if Mansur had revealed where the bomb was. Harris said Mansur had not told the information yet, but they had agreed. If he succeeded in getting Mansur and his wife out of there, Mansur would reveal the bomb's location. Then Harris showed the mobile phone he had obtained from one of Jackson's men, the leader of the mercenaries attacking them. It turned out that the mercenary team was named Team Fabridge, and they were from Virginia, but Harris did not yet know who was commanding them. At the same time, the CIA director called Mansur, asking him to listen to a woman's voice recording on his laptop. When Mansur heard carefully, it turned out that the woman's voice was identical to the voice that had incited Mansur to carry out the bombing in Washington, D.C. At that moment, Mansur realized that the voice was Jenny's. Hearing this, the CIA director promptly pointed a gun at Jenny, demanding her to confess that she was behind all this. Jenny did not admit this, arguing that many people in the worldwide have similar voices. Suddenly, they were attacked again by Jackson's henchmen, leading to a shootout. In the chaos, Mansur tried to escape with his wife. However, he was caught while Nisha fled to a lower room. Harris, witnessing Mansur's caught, attempted a rescue. This required him to duel with Jackson's assistant. Exhausted, Harris was eventually overpowered by Jackson's right-hand man. At the same time, it appeared that Jackson's right-hand man also caught the CIA director and was then shot by Jenny. This marked the beginning of a grand conspiracy. Afterwards, they took Mansur to a room for interrogation. They tortured Mansur to make him reveal the location of the bomb. However, Mansur refused to speak. Jenny then ordered one of her subordinates to catch Nisha, believing that torturing Nisha would compel Mansur to talk. Quickly, their men went to the lower room to search for Nisha. At the same time, Harris had risen again. He immediately kills one of Jenny's men, who is searching for Nisha. Afterwards, Harris encountered another of Jenny's men who had caught Nisha. A fierce battle ensued, and Harris managed to kill this person in the end. Then he wore the mercenary's uniform to disguise himself as one of Jenny's men so he could pretend to have successfully catched Nisha. Next, he entered the room pretending to hand over Nisha. Jenny interrogated Mansur by threatening to kill his wife. Eventually, Mansur revealed that he had stored the bomb in container number 69, his favorite position. Upon hearing this, Jenny immediately instructed her members to contact Jackson and ask him to secure the bomb. Then Chitty cleaned Mansur's face with a tissue because Mansur had to make a threat video for the American government. There, Mansur was forced to write a threat letter. At the same time, it was recorded, and the footage was later distributed to the public. Initially, Mansur refused because he no longer intended to detonate the bomb. However, Jenny threatened to kill Nisha again so Mansur had no choice but to comply with Jenny's orders to read the letter while being recorded by Jenny. The letter stated that Mansur was a British citizen who came to Washington, D.C. to seek revenge and would destroy the city in just a matter of minutes. If the government did not want this to happen, then the government had to send a sum of $50 million. After successfully recording it, Jenny immediately shot Mansur. Then she went to meet Jackson to retrieve the bomb. Harris, who had been undercover all this time, was surprised to find Jenny was the mastermind behind it all. After Jenny left, Harris immediately killed Jenny's subordinates present there. Then he asked Nisha to wait there while he went to stop Jenny and Jackson. His disguise went unnoticed by Jackson's other subordinates. However, upon entering the train, Harris was discovered by Jackson's assistant, leading to a fight. They appeared evenly matched until Harris directed Jackson's right-hand men into a warehouse. Inside the warehouse, Harris had to use stealth mode to eliminate them all. Since Jackson's right-hand man brought several of his subordinates, 
After successfully taking them all down, he would then stop Jenny. Not long after, one of Jackson's men suddenly comes, and fortunately, Harris can eliminate him. After that, Harris directly attacks Jackson's remaining men. After successfully eliminating all of Jackson's men, he faces Jackson, and they eventually duel. It's apparent they are equally strong. However, in the end, Harris succeeds in handcuffing Jackson. There, Harris chooses not to kill Jackson because he wants Jackson to be punished as severely as possible. Then after that, Harris enters the plane to meet Jenny. It's evident, once inside, that Jenny can only raise her hands because she realizes all her mercenaries and subordinates have been slaughtered by Harris. Jenny says this is just the beginning because she and her other team have prepared a bigger plan. Then the FBI troops arrive and immediately arrest Jenny after Jenny is secured. Harris then takes Jenny's phone. He immediately deletes Monster's threat video before it spreads to the public. And finally, the film ends.